Hello everyone, welcome to my wing tutorial. I'm using two wire coat hangers and some pliers to make the shape of the wing. These are for my Nimona cosplay. Obviously follow whatever pattern or shape for your own. And these will probably work for most designs. I made a vague wing shape here with a sort of slight bend in it so that it would go into the back support later. I did two for each wing, so I needed four coat hangers all together. Three if you include the tail, but that's a different video. I then used electrical tape. You can use any type of tape, cellar tape, duct tape, anything would work. But I use this because it's lost a lot less likely to snag and it also gives a lot more body, I suppose. I then sketched out the sort of flesh of the wing, I suppose, although this is actually what I would call the skeleton of the wing, making sure that I had about an inch on either side of the wire so that when you cut the foam, the wire can be sandwiched inside. I actually edited, edited the, um, I edited <laughs> the shape here following the pattern that I saw on the photo reference. I thought it was a bit too long and it would look a bit strange. I much preferred this one actually. They were a bit small on me because I'm so tall, but actually they look really cute. And I think if I ever did it again, I'd probably make them taller and sort of go more up above my head. But you have to also think about how easy they will be to like wear and manage. These were quite good, except when you went out in the wind, they caught the wind a lot and ended up breaking, unfortunately. But um, yes, then I sketched out the membrane Using a box cutter, this is a Stanley knife, I cut out the cardboard and I'm cutting it all out in one piece and saving that so that I have a template so that I know that when I cut the foam, it will all be exactly the same shape. So that's what you get with a little wobbly end there because I cut it on a fold. Then you want to cut out what I'm going to call the membrane for the wing. This is basically the flaps of skin flaps of skin sounds disgusting so it's going to be the membrane and I save these pieces for later for when I'm spraying so that I can cover the fabric and not get paint on the parts I don't want paint on it's actually really useful to save any templates that you use in this regard and cardboard is pretty cheap I just used a parcel that's that side that's the other side and that's a template obviously if you're going to edit anything later on the template won't match but hey ho then I put that onto foam and I labeled them all of the pieces unfortunately I couldn't get every piece out on this piece of foam I had three full pieces and then like another part piece I suppose I need four sides for these wings so two wings and two sides each is four pieces because I'm sandwiching the foam uh, or rather I'm sandwiching the wire in between the foam cutting it out now I'm using a Stanley knife or a box cutter probably should have used a scalpel to get a much more sharp edge but it really just depends on how sharp it is that you uh, the, the how sharp the tool it is that you're using I'm now making the back support by putting tubing into the wire and cutting it to size I'm making a little mark or I did make a mark but I hadn't filmed it as to how long the pieces need to be as you can see the wires are different pieces so they'll both be different pieces I then put it into a clamp and used a I think it's called a hacksaw I'm not sure and I cut both pieces for the wire I ended up sellotaping the two pieces together which again for some reason I didn't film although I do remember filming it but you'll see that later on so you need two pieces for each wing which is obviously four pieces because two wings. This is what it looks like. No need to sand the ends. It's not going to be seen. These are all the foam pieces once they've been cut out. And as you can see, what I said earlier about the sharpness of the box cutter, it's got a bit of a ridge, which we will have to get rid of because we're perfectionists. So I'm going to use something called a Dremel to get rid of these pieces. It's basically like a sander, but on a machine with little pieces and you can get a really accurate sort of well you can change the pieces and get whatever you want really for it 
You could also just use sandpaper or a nail file. Here I'm putting the wire onto the foam and because I've taped up the foam and I also don't, uh, sorry, I've taped up the wire and I also don't want the foam to be too bulky in the middle so that it won't stick together, I'm going to dremel a gap or a, a ridge, I suppose, into the foam pieces where I've marked here so that the wire piece can sit in the foam and it's a lot easier to stick the two pieces of foam together. If that makes sense, it makes sense to me. Anyway, we're outside in the rain, which is not a good idea. That's what the Dremel looks like. And I'm just going in Dremeling, I suppose you should call it. And as you can see, there's the groove that I'm making that I was trying to explain earlier, but I really didn't do a very good job. Ignore my socks and sandals in the rain. Um, it is what it is. And there you see the groove or the channel being made, which is what the wire is going to sit in. So that when you stick the two pieces of foam together, it's a lot less bulky. And then I'm using Prime Seal. This is from Polyprops in matte grey. It's what I had left over from a different project. I didn't actually film that either for some reason. I felt like I was filming for days when I did this, but there you go. I'm using a Lycra, which I'll use one piece of for each wing. I'm measuring it on the wing. I'm going to cut out slightly bigger, just so I have enough fabric. I don't have to cut it again later on, but I actually ended up cutting a lot off this piece. But it's best to be safe than sorry. You can always take away, you can never add. And then that's what's going to be the membrane. Here's me cutting out the second piece. And you want the shiny side at the front. I'm then using contact, contact adhesive, just doing a test piece here on the foam. This foam isn't primed, so it might react differently to primed foam. But I think I... Yes, I did. I did prime the pieces before I stuck them together. Use something heavy on contact adhesive if you can. And this is me testing it and it's very, very sticky. Works with every project. Highly recommend contact adhesive. Great. So I'm spraying it down here. You've got to shake it before you spray it. I made a mistake here by spraying it along these fingers, I don't know. You literally just need to spray it up along the back band part because that's what we're going to stick the fabric onto. And I also made the mistake of spraying the fabric the first time. Um, oh, sorry, no, I actually... Yes, I only sprayed there because I'm putting in the wire piece. And then I'm spraying over the top as well. Honestly, this might seem overkill, but... You can never use enough glue in my in my estimation. So that's why you didn't need to spray those finger bits that I'm spraying right now the first time because you're putting the wire in. But then the second time you obviously want to spray them because that's what the fabric's going to stick to. The only reason that I would recommend that is because it stops you getting glue places that you don't need glue. And make sure the shiny side is obviously on the outside. So because this piece is going to be in the middle, the shiny side needs to go onto the table. I cut up into the uh, pink fabric as well, the membrane hem. <laughs> I don't really know how to explain this any better. But as you can see, where I'm placing it, it has a slight curve. And that's the exact curve of what the membrane will look like. This was incredibly tricky the first time I did it. As you can see that piece in the corner there, I sprayed the entire piece of fabric in glue, which made it, made it really, really hard to stick down. Oh, we're on to the back piece. Sorry, I'll talk about that later. Um, I'm using a piece of scrap leather and a pen to cut it to size, measuring against the pipe here. I have four pieces of pipe, as I said earlier, for the four uh, wing adjoining pieces. I don't know, I'm really bad at this. Anyway, you want to measure little dashes and don't put them too, too close together, obviously, because you might end up cutting something you don't want to cut. And then alternating that for the other piece. I don't really know how to explain it, but as you can see, um, I sort of put them all in one line and then put them all slightly lower for the other side. You'll see it later. Um, I'm using a box cutter again, Stanley Knife, whatever you fancy, whatever's sh strong enough to cut through leather. And then you can see there I've tested the pipe going through. 
carried on doing this all the way down you really want a sharp knife and a lot of muscle to cut through leather because it's quite strong but this was quite thick leather I think it was probably about five millimeters I don't know what this thing's called it's a stamp and a hammer and I'm using it to stamp out holes that I can put rope through to attach it to my body here's some lovely ASMR There you go, did you enjoy that? I did. It was quite funny editing that back and <laughs> hearing how fast I was hammering away there. So I've got one in each corner, obviously, four in total. And this is what it looks like in the end. And you can see what I was mentioning there, where it was staggered. That's what it looks like, very secure. I put some glue in to make sure they weren't going up and down. Not pretty, but it does the job. Put the rope in and then mark them. And this is me testing it out. It worked really, really well. They're very lightweight, very easy to wear, highly recommend. I ended up actually having to adjust them and adding a tie at the top. Oh, this was the part that I forgot to film on the wings and I had to use the footage for the tail, but I'm using Polyprop's clay foam here, just on the edges to hide all of that rough edge and also make it look a bit more natural you don't have to do this this is completely optional but i thought it looked a lot more clean and made everything a lot more smooth i'm using my fingers again first time i've ever working with this product but it looked pretty good it turned out quite nice smooth all those rough edges now i'm painting i'm using hextile matte magenta again from polyprops and an airbrush thinner and then this little squeegee bottle to mix it up but it's probably about half and half I don't know, I sort of eyeballed the ratio. I then put it into an airbrush, I think this is what it's called, and tested it out before I used it. Always test it out before you use it. And then sprayed, I forgot to put down the cardboard here, but I will be putting it down later. Very, very even light layers. Make sure that you dry them in between. That's very, very important. Here's the cardboard going down. <laughs> Me learning from my mistakes. And I did probably about five or six layers for each side of the wing. And then I used just a paintbrush and some straight paint to paint the insides. Probably wasn't necessary. I don't know if I would say you have to do this, but I wanted to do it. And I think it looked better having the pink there, but there you go. This is the clay foam here you can see on the side and I'm just painting it. And that's the last thing I did on these wings, and then I wore them. So this is me at Birmingham Con, being a goof in my Nimona wings. I think they look great. And I'm just showing them off here. So yeah, I really hope that you like this tutorial. There are a few things that I would change about it the next time I did it. There will be a tail tutorial coming up soon. So look out for that. And if anyone wants a video of me putting this whole cosplay on or any questions that you have, let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!